how do you know the compressor's bad? Check this out. Low side, high side, gauges are connected. Low side's 145, 150. High side is the same, 150, right? Check this out. Measuring the amp draw of the compressor, nine amps. So you can hear the compressor running, but is it pumping? Check the capacitor. Does it look swollen? No, but let's take the leads off and check it. So the amps are nine. Let's turn this to volts. Let's grab our test leads. Let's check the voltage going to the compressor and the fan, okay? Checking the load side of the contactor, 243 volts. Now let's check what the compressor should be drawing. Let's see what run load amps are. Let's see. Fan, condenser, compressor, run load amps, 13, right? So we measured nine amps, okay? Because these are the compressor wires, right? Right. We got common wire, we got the run wire, and we got the start winding, okay? So common, run, winding, start winding, okay? We got three capacitors. Bottom ones for the indoor fan, the middle ones for the outdoor fan, and the top one is just for the compressor. So, make sure there's no wasp. Any wasp? No wasp. Pull the power. Now I'm going to take one lead off of this capacitator. Okay. Take this other meter because it measures microfarads. All right, let's measure this capacitor. Let's see what it says. Okay, got it hooked up. It's measuring 39. Pretty sure this is 40 microfarad. So, capacitor is good. Compressor is not pumping. Compressor is likely bad. I've been working on this unit for a long time. I've put a heat exchanger in this unit, changed capacitors. Pretty sure I've changed the indoor blower in this one. It's a two and a half ton, says 30,000 BTU. It's 1996. It's probably time to replace this unit. But I just wanted to show you what a bad compressor looks like. It's not always shorted to ground. Sometimes it's a mechanical failure and that's what this is. So let's plug this wire back up. All right here, see this? Wires plugged back up. See, look at the pressures. This is the standing pressure, right? 150, 150. Watch how it doesn't really change. Let's stick a hard start on it. Disconnect the power, install the old hard starter. First I'm going to find a place for it. Temporarily now, temporarily. Make sure you get good grip on it. Hard start is installed. Okay. Whoops. Still nothing. Compressor has failed. Okay. Let's measure the windings. See what we get. How about that? I cannot believe it's not starting. Okay, well, let's turn this back to amps and check our run winding, 9.4. All right, now let's get that other winding, our common winding. 
in there. 5.9. Interesting. Okay. Let's measure the windings. So power's disconnected. I got the meter set to ohms. I took the two uh, windings for the compressor off of the contactor. You can see I just used my drill. And then I took the start winding wire off of the capacitor. So what I'm going to do after setting my meter to ohms is I'm going to set it right there and then take and measure these windings first. Okay, so you can see there. Okay, we got common and run. 1.0. Okay, so now I'm gonna do from the start to each one of these. So from the run winding now to the start winding, 2.8. Okay. Now we're going to take this lead out and put it here, okay? And that is from the common winding to the start winding, okay? 2.4, 2.5, okay? So it doesn't really add up. So we can say just from measuring the windings that the windings don't look that great. I'm going to go ahead and take the top off and take a look at the actual wiring going into the compressor. That way I can make sure there's no uh, loose connection, there's no um, rust and the uh, terminals aren't just rotted off completely because that can happen and that could be why the compressor's not really working the way it should. Although you can see by the pressures, we installed a hard start kit. This hard start kit is made by ICM. It's an ICM 856 ICM controls. So check out the website, check out the number. Solid state relay and a hard start capacitor. All right, let me take a look in, inside. Just wanna go over the measurements that we read on the windings of that compressor. From common to start, we had 2.5. From common to run, we have 1.0. And from start to run, we have 2.8. And I want you to know that the common to start will always have a higher resistance value than the common to run. And that's because the start windings are heavier and they deal with the inrush current required to start the compressor. The start to run will always be the added value of the common to start and the common to run. So this right here, these two together should equal this but they don't equal that. They're a little bit off. So that's an indication that we have a problem. Now, you can have open windings, which is not to be confused with internal overload uh, being open on the compressor. Um, if you find that the common to start and the common to run are open, the compressor is off on internal overload. And the overload's an internal safety device and is in series with common. Uh, generally, this condition happens when the compressor is exposed to excessive heat or amp draw, and you can cool the compressor down. I got a video down below for you. So, open windings, if you ever measure, you know, from start to run or common to run, or common to start, and it's open and the compressor is not hot, you may have, check your harness and your wiring, but you may have a bad compressor. Uh, also, shorted windings. If you measure from any of these windings to ground and you get a measurement, or your breaker's tripping, uh, as soon as your compressor comes on, make sure your contact, contactor's pulling in, make sure you have voltage to the compressor, but if it's tripping the breaker, then you could have a bad compressor. But just wanna go over this real quick. Took this panel off so I could see a little better. Look at that reciprocating compressor. That thing's a beast, that's the original. Took two screws out of this little fan guard here so that I could take a look, and that's where our wiring is. So I need to take that cover off. Oh crap. Oh crap. <laughs> it just broke right off. Okay, well, I guess uh, I we need a compressor anyways, probably. So I'm just gonna break it all off and then take a look. Got the cover off, it just fell apart. Let's take a look and see what we got. 
Are all the wires connected? Looks like yes, they are all connected. So, that's one thing you need to make sure you check. You need to check the harness, check the wiring. You know, make sure that it's not rubbing against the shell either. Okay, we definitely got a bad compressor. Well, good job, American Standard. I love the way these things are built. They're built to last. And that's why this one's lasted 20 years. I'm pretty sure I've replaced the rollout switch. I've definitely replaced this limit. This is a high limit. I've definitely had to clean this tube. I've definitely replaced the pressure switch. I've replaced the inducer motor, I think, twice on this unit. I have replaced the heat exchanger. I'm pretty sure I've replaced the gas valve. That's why you can see that newer uh, pipe sealant right there. Uh, probably replaced, oh yeah, I've replaced the control board because there was a kit now for the control board where you have to use this uh, plug and wire here, this little harness, I guess it's a kit, to where you can plug the old Molex plug into the new one, into the new board. Because you can see they sell this little um, mounting uh, hardware for it. Replace quite a bit on this. Wow. THT 2437. I've replaced a ton of these. Be careful when you tighten these up. You don't want to crack the plastic. It's very easy to crack, but this is the high limit that I showed you in that unit. Here are the burners for that American Standard unit. The BNR 1078s. I replaced a ton of these. And on this schematic, you can see where the black wire is the common, the orange is the start, and the red is the run, okay? And there was an optional with optional start kit for the compressor. Huh, interesting. Because you can go over here and check it out. CSR, compressor start relay coil, compressor start capacitor. But there is no compressor start capacitor or relay, right? There's just this run capacitor that was installed for this thing. I've had to replace the burners. Look, there's brand new burners. Uh, I've had to clean the flame sensor. I'm sure I've had to clean the igniter. I think I've probably had to clean the orifices. Spiders will build webs in these orifices. And you'll have one lighting and the next one won't be lighting, so. Back at the office, I got a price on a new compressor for that 27 year old American Standard unit that we installed in 1996. Gave the price to the customer and the price for the compressor installs about $2,000. And you have to have a kit now because those rotolocks locks that are on there, I'm sure those are probably hard to get off of that 1996 model uh, American Standard unit. So I gave a price on the compressor, but you can't get an ETA, so we don't even know when we can get it. Gave a price on the compressor, $2,000. Gave him a price on a new unit, new two and a half ton package gas unit of $6,000. They went with the new unit price also have the file, the folder that we keep for that homeowner. And I've got a total of 10 tickets in there, five of which are where I went and worked on the unit. And I think it dates back to 2008. No, 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 2015 was the first time I had to work on it. 2015, which is eight years ago. And Everything I told you in the video, like the new gas valve, new inducer motor, new heat exchanger, new burners, the indoor coil was leaking, so we had to add refrigerator. Several different types of repairs. Uh, the last four or five years, the customer said on the phone while I was talking to them, after they decided to go with the new unit, they said the last four or five years, we had to have you guys out several times in a year because the refrigerant and the indoor coil leaking. So glad they went with a new unit. Hopefully I won't be working on it as much now since it's going to be a new unit or that's what you would expect at least. Taking out the old American Standard, putting in the York package unit. Let me know if you think this is a good idea. I hope it is. Darren, this unit's 27 years old. Lasted 27 years. Worked on it about 10 times. You think this one's going to last longer, Darren? Absolutely. What? I hope so. Oh. What do you think, Willie? <laughs> Absolutely. Let me get it. Absolutely. He wants better. Absolutely. All right. That's what he was after. Uh, <laughs> Why this unit lasted so long. 
It's all that silicone. <laughs> they held it all together. Do we have any batteries? Well, yeah, we got batteries. Custom box. How about one? Everybody needs one of these. You know it. Show you guys this duck work. Look at that return. The return needs to be 14. It looks like 10 or 12. And then, ooh, the supply trunk looks good. Everything's up and straight. Flex band's not insulated. Right. Good job. I didn't do it. You know who put this in? Uh -uh. Your pa. My dad, man. Yeah, well. So. Back when at least I can rag him on something. Look yeah, at that yeah. flex band. Get the rag. Oh, uh, no, your I'll dad do it. didn't do it. I'll do it. Who do you think did it? would have done it. There'd been a thousand screws in it. Oh, well, there it? is 422, <laughs> so maybe it was the day he was out low on screws. He could have been know. low on screws that day, really. <laughs> oh, did I hit your arm? I'm sorry, brother. Yeah, thanks for ripping my arm open. Oh, what'd you do? I went and taught this deer this Did William out try of to bite you? Attitude. I fixed that deer thinking he was going to come in my truck instead of open the windshield and let him in. Okay. Get on in here. Lay down. Hey, that's right there. Looking good. New disconnect. Rain shield looking good. All right. There's horses across the road, so Jackson got to feed them. You having fun? Awesome. If you want to learn how to do an estimate the right way and take care of the customer, I've got a video on how to do an estimate down below for you to learn more. If you want to learn how to size equipment or price HVAC equipment, or you want to learn how to size ductwork, I've got a bunch of videos on my members only playlist. All you have to do is join and become a level three member. You'll have access to all of those HVAC courses, those videos that I put together that can fast track your career as an HVAC business owner or a technician. Join, become a level three member, and you'll have access to all those videos. If you want my email where I can send you a bunch of guides that I have, like airflow and duct design training, geothermal training, I've got a bunch of guides, sheets, like mini split sizing. Click the join button, become a level one member, and I will get you my email. Just comment below, say, I joined, I'm a member, I'll reach out to you, and I'll give you my email, and that'll leave you contact with me. If you need tech support, you need help figuring out what your next step needs to be in your career, whether you need to start your own company or you just need to learn more about being a technician. There is ways to get access to my phone number, and that's level four. So become a level four member, join, reach out to me, let me know. I'll check the membership list, and then I'll give you my email, and then I'll give you my phone number so you can actually make contact with me. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. Let me know if you did learn something, what it was down in the comments. If you got a question, remember questions lead to more content. It's because of my members that I keep going and I am able to do these videos. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, please think about doing that. Hit the like button, smash the bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.